yeah. organization as youth is so important organization as activists is so important because the more the merrier the more exactly. you are the more you provide a space it's impossible not to hear you welcome to hello future speaking the podcast where the future is shaped by the voices of the next generation. Our speakers on this episode are all members of the Youth Advisory Committee from the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs, compromising of young leaders from diverse backgrounds who are dedicated to creating a better future for all of us. From discussing the latest policy developments to sharing personal experiences, you will hear firsthand from these young individuals who are working hard to make an impact in their communities and, of course, beyond. Join us as we delve into the thoughts and ideas of the future leaders and also the future decision makers. This is Hello Future Speaking. Okay, so first off, we're going to start with a short round of introduction. I'm here with three, I mean, I'm two incredible women and myself, of course. So Pelimo, can you give us a short introduction? Um, hello, everyone. My name is Pelimo Nyajo from Nigeria, and I'm a member of the Youth Advisory Committee. And I am also a youth activist in my country, and I'm interested in disability inclusion. Yeah, thank you so much, Philemon. And you, Grace? Hey, this is Grace from South Sudan, a youth and gender activist. And I'm glad to be here. Also a member, of course, of the Ad Youth Advisory Committee. Yes, and me, last but not least, my name is Kevin Estasia Palm. I'm from Curaçao, the Dutch member of the Youth Advisory Committee. And in my daily life, I'm a youth engagement expert. So before we start off, I want to I want to tell you guys before I when I was doing my research for this for this topic, I came across a very interesting joke that I want to share with you guys. Um, it was I must admit it was one of the most horrible jokes I've ever heard in my life. But it's like this: Why did the young activist cross the road? Why? Why? To get to the other side of change. <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. <That> joke. <laughs> horrible joke. It's a horrible joke, but I think that also can lead. <laughs> it can lead this conversation a bit because of course not activists are going to the other side of change of course it's a horrible joke but i think we can go from that so i think the first question is what does activism mean for you guys so i want to i want to start with you Pelham. what does activism mean for you okay so i'm going to do a call and response i usually do in my poem so when i say my people my people you say waiting happen okay waiting happen waiting happen that means what happened okay so, my people, my people. Meeting happen. My people, my people. Meeting, Meeting happen. happen. Yeah. So, basically, activism to me is kind of like a call and a response. It's taking action towards societal and political change in my community. And I do that through the creative arts. And I think the creative arts is a very powerful tool. But, yeah, creating social change is really difficult <coughs> sometimes for young people. But it's really, really important for young people to start up a change and for other people to follow. So I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. And what was the uh, can you can you do the poem one more time? My people, my people. Meeting Yaku. Waiting Hapu. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't have to. Um, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, of course, am, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll get used to Nigerian yeah, slang. I'll get, I'll get used to it soon. But yeah, so <laughs> Grace, I want to move on now to you. What does activism mean for you in concrete terms? Activism to me is uh, a start of a revolution. And if anything I know is any change that has happened in society was a revolution. And Every issue that we have in a society needs us to break the barrier and to break the silence. And that is very important in my aspect where I feel like once we get comfortable with issues that are happening in our society, they continue to happen. And getting the idea that I have to speak up and I have to join people who speak up to push the change and to start a revolution that will enable everyone to be equal, to be themselves from women to people living with disabilities to people of color that means a lot that means a lot to me yeah i really like that you said you know activism is a revolution because it really is and if you look at all the revolutions going on right now you know climate change economic um economic impact and all that you see that young people are at the front lines of every single um, yeah, as, as as you said, Grace, every single revolution. And I think that's that's what makes us, and especially this generation, so powerful because, you know, 
we're not scared to stand up. We're not scared to be uh, an activist. We're we're scared of the future. I think the future is way more scary than anything that we can face while you know going to protest and, and doing all these actions. So I really like that you mentioned that. And you know, I want to tie this now to to our experiences in the Youth Advisory Committee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So how how would you say that um, your experience in the Yuck reinforced your your activism in your in your daily life? Well, that's great. Um, I think when we all joined the Yuck, it was from our already existing experience and our contacts and our networks. And working for so long in the civil society, I think every other day you realize how inequality grows and the effects that exist in it. And it could always start like an admiration. You're just like, being an activist is cool and everything. But once you get there, you're like, these are real issues. These are issues that for some people, it's a life and death situation. And just being able to do it at such a formal setting when you're used to doing it in front of people, when you're used to doing it with the, those who are living those experiences, push the idea of how institutions and policies and legislation affect the common human being, the common citizen of a s- simple country. How if I speak to a policy officer and I tell them um, issues to do with climate change affect gender-based violence, if I tell them that because of floods, uh, women have to move and get displaced, and because of that, yeah. they get uh, exposed to all forms of harassment and assault. That is something this policy officer, who's probably in charge of so much change, does not know. Yeah, exactly. And this Youth Advisory Committee provides me the space to speak about it. It's so challenging at the same time. It's such a big responsibility for each of us, and I always try to not be biased. I try, always try to sit down, create a persona, of a young person who has no one to speak for them. And I embody that. And embodying that to speak on legislation that affects so much, I think that means a lot as a member of a youth advisory committee. Wow, I really like that you mentioned also, you know, the, the life or death situations because, you know, we see, for example, in terms of the climate change or the, the Me Too movement, we see that these, you know, these protests, these revolutions are, yeah, they're life or death. So I really like that you mentioned that, but um, Pelham, I want to move on to you now. So how has your experience in the YAC really reinforced your activism? I think being a member of the Youth Advisory Committee is very strategic as an activist to have a place, a seat on the table, to be able to influence decisions that are being made, to be able to influence policies that are going to affect you. I think it's like really strategic and helps your activism because if you're able to directly speak to the policy officers yourself, then like it's really huge as an activist. So I think for me, it was really challenging at first because I come from like the whole creative world and we're really like very disruptive and sporadic and everything is just really kind of crazy in a way. Not really crazy, crazy, but like crazy. So it was really new for me to be in such a formal setting and learn how to sit on the table and discuss these matters. So I'd say being on the Youth Advisory Committee as an activist has given me a unique position to be able to speak on behalf of the young people I am advocating for and to really speak for the young people in my country and young people in general, without really carrying the entire weight of young people, you know, because I can't speak for everyone, but to at least represent in the way I'm able to represent. So, yeah, it's been really amazing being a YAC member and also being a creative in the formal world. So I feel like there are a lot of intersections between all these things and it's been really, really um, insightful being a member of the Youth Advisory Committee. Yeah, I, I really like that. And I also share your experience. You know, you said it's it's really strategic. And I think, you know, of course, change comes from, yeah, without, but the most impactful change, the most yeah, efficient change comes from within. I think that's exactly why the Youth Advisory Committee is also so um, so strategic, as you said, Pelamo. So I really like that you also also mentioned that. And I think it's also, you know, in my personal experience, as my activism also, you know, you, you get closer contact with the people who can also, you know, make those real changes. So, you know, you don't really have to rely on the, yeah, let's say, the goodwill of the policymakers yeah. because you are, yeah, in theory, also a policymaker. I think that makes the yak so, so incredible for us. But, um, you know, I want to move on now to, you know, tools and best practices. And I think a lot of us, you know, after all this time in the, in the Youth Advisory Committee, we've learned a lot, we've 
the, of course learn from the ministry but also of course i think mostly learn from each other yeah. i think you know the the, the 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 fact that we um yeah share best practices is also something really you know really strong so i think it would be nice to also like speak a bit about the the best practices for young activists so i think grace do you have um yeah best practices or tools to to share All right, um I'm going to give a scenario of a journey of a young activist who saw an issue or experienced an issue and wants change. Sometimes the issue can be so traumatic and you have so much anger in you and you really really want to push change and often you feel that this change is so basic concept but no one else is doing it. It's the passion and the attack that hits you, and that's what you need as an activist. And when it this hits you, you want to be heard. And mistakes we do as activists is uh, we do not organize, and that's one thing we do not organize. And considering our context where we are, you have to take a step back and think about what you're going to say, who you're speaking for, and who you're speaking to. and taking that step back as an activist is so so important strategic activism by itself and the best practice i've also learned from activism is networks connections and collaboration as an individual often you would be dismissed but as a, as a community of young people organizations networks associations you are a stronger force and can easily be heard Yeah. Organization as youth is so important. Organization as activists is so important because the more the merrier. The more exactly. you are, the more you provide a space. It's impossible not to hear you and channels of um, contributions. So, who do you want to talk to, and how will you get there? Often, even in our situations, you're blocked to reach the person who you have to reach. So, you ask yourself, how will I reach this person who does not want to hear from me? So. tapping into channels that are uh do the media through policy papers through white papers to petitions through social media I'm so glad we have media that is such a powerful tool we can easily use and taking advantage of that but most importantly collaboration as an individual again you're just another person saying another thing as a community you are a community pushing for change and having a structured um idea of how to push for change but also how we do activism so i think most of us including pelemo with me here we are in countries where challenging the political regime is by itself scary yeah and uh one thing i do and i've learned a lot and we practice a civil society is we usually offer solutions especially when talking to government institutions or political leaders we could easily say you're not building school you're doing a bad job and what that creates is this person feels threatened criticized and and because of the lack of institutions that can protect us feels the need to push us away mm-hmm. i could say the same statement is of if you build more schools you will help the situation of uh education sh- that is affecting many people you help um young people to to get to schools and even inc- reduce the rates of unemployment amongst young people that is offering a solution that is being strategic that is yeah. knowing your audience and if i'm speaking to young people and i'm organizing them for a protest i would tell them we have no schools and we have to ask for them knowing what message goes to who and how you're supposed to do it these are very few of the best practices but most importantly as an activist being safe doing it is so important there's so much passion in it and i get it it's as you you want change and you want it now but if you get removed from the picture there's no change coming so always think about protecting yourself and again comes down to strategy and having good friends who will take care of you through your network i think that's the few i can say for now yeah i really like that you mentioned also the safety aspect but i, I want to come to that later you also mentioned you know the, the the fact that who are you speaking for as an activist and i think that's also really really quite important i think i want to i want to share that also with the audience in terms of best practices we have to you know be aware that the fact that we are in these positions for example with the yak means that we are yeah in in a privileged position you know a lot of people do not have the the privilege to be in these positions and to yeah be able to you know influence these policies so i think as you know as yeah 
leaders in our communities, it's also our responsibility to make sure that we represent the people who are unrepresented, you know, to be the voice for the people who do not have the voice. I think the best practice that I can share is that, you know, of course you are speaking, but you shouldn't be speaking for yourself. You should be speaking for everyone, especially, you know, these marginalized communities, you know, LGBTQIA persons, foreign um, foreign persons, disabled persons, also the you know people who live in not urban areas, but rural areas. So I think it's important for us to, you know, be an overarching voice and, um, yeah, of course, make sure that we're, only not, we're not only speaking for ourselves, but for the entire community as, as, as a whole. But Pelimo, um, do you have any best practices to share? Um, yeah, I think Grace has said it all, <laughs> really. Um, but I, I'll just, like, highlight what she said about mobilization and collaboration. I think it's so important because I can't speak about activism without... Um, taking us back to the NSAS protest in Nigeria. It was a really crucial time. And I think if there are some best practices we followed ourselves, we would have had better results. And I think mobilizing and collaborating with CSOs and other young people is really important. And also inclusion, like how can we include other people, like Kevin said about people in the rural areas, um, people with disabilities and other group of youth how do we include that and i think we need to have like well-structured plans when carrying out activism because sometimes we just come out with the passion and the fire and that's great but then we need to have a well-structured plan to be able to get the for instance the government to listen to us and to be serious about um what we're doing i also think it's important to have like certain soft skills as an activist it's really, really important to have um, soft skills like critical thinking and problem solving and negotiation skills. Because in the NSAS protests, I think at a point, we're not really able to negotiate well with the government. So I think you should be able to know who you're speaking to, like Grace said, and know how to negotiate your way to what you want as an activist to get that change you're looking for. And also know the channels Know the mediums you're using to act, um, to do your activism. For instance, I'm an artist, so how can I best use art as a tool for activism, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think you should also know the different tools you could use as an activist and utilize them really properly. Yeah, exactly. I really love that you mentioned that. And, you know, of course, I think also Grace said everything. And, of course, Grace, you also said the, the, the aspect of safety. I think that's something that a lot of the times we, we forget and, you know, I want to share a story of when, um, I, of course, I have to be mindful that we don't share too much information because, it's, you know, it's, of course, the safety of this person. But one, one of the people we work with is also um, really ha- struggles with you know, being able to speak freely on these issues because, you know, the government listens, the government hears, and, of course, the government acts. And I think that's quite important to take into consideration. You know, I remember one time um, from someone else I was working with in the past, you know, he, yeah, he spoke out against the government, not really in... You know, a negative way but just yeah spoke out against the government and that uh, um that the government ended up showing up at the, up at the, at the door and i think that's something that we really have to be mindful of because um if we want to interact with people I and mean, if we want to um have these young people give us their opinions we have to also be mindful that the, the safety aspect is also quite important so so how do you see that grace um unfortunately i work uh, in a space where I know young people who had to go to exile. I know young journalists who were killed. I know uh, young people who were arrested. I know young people who disappeared. And this is the space where we're supposed to be passionate about the change we want. It's scary because harassment, extrajudicial arrests, arbitrary arrests, threatening of lives and we've seen um, NGOs being shut down, media houses being shut down. We've seen young people being afraid. Where, where I live, and I'm, um, I'm glad I can say this, uh, if you want to do a workshop, you need a national security clearance. And that means that the workshop you want to do, you need to not go against or do not have to challenge the political regime. One time we had to travel to a different country to, to discuss a topic because it was too delicate to discuss it in the country. And those who took us there were international communities who, because of their diplomatic uh, immunity, are safe enough to speak about it. So in that space, in that story alone, 
we take advantage of people who are safe yep. and spaces that exist. We have uh, human rights defenders organizations which defend and provide uh, uh, safety for uh, activists. Like if you feel threatened in a way, you can always just call them and they'll put you in a position where of immunity. We also have NGOs that provide uh, safety matters and embassies as well. Uh, we have Amnesty. We have embassies that are allies and uh, support um, support activists. And even for us in the civil society, we need to understand that we also have to keep the young people we work with safe uh, when we're asking them for information, when we're researching, when we're developing stuff. We need to understand the context. And... Uh, there's an Arab saying, and I hate that I'm going to say this. There's an Arabic saying that says, if you want something from a dog, you call them sa. And uh, unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Since we want change, we have to abide by the laws. But at the same time, if it means that we need to change our strategies to get what we want, it's upon us to be together in it, strategic about it, but at the same time, protective about it. And I do not agree with the with the idea of just not doing it anymore. But at the same time, uh, I agree with the idea of doing it in the right way and agreeing with baby steps, you know, taking baby steps as wins. Because uh, we had a protest one time um, against a minister who was violent with his wife and because of his immunity as a, as a political minister, um, he was not brought to justice and when women groups saw this we said if such a person at a high at a high position can get away with it what message are you sending for other women out there if you cannot protect a minister's wife from his husband what how is a woman who cannot even access a police station going to feel about it and what message are you sending and to be honest though it felt like basic uh, human rights. It, it was all over social media. There was evidence about it, but no one was speaking about it. And the passion there was unbelievable. But at the same time, the response was horrible. It felt bad that no one wanted to talk about it and no one was willing to take any change. And it took so much time. But we we worked now to develop institutional reforms that protect them and uh, and put such people in justice. So we went back because even after the process, nothing happened and wrote petitions. We pushed for legislations and pushed for gender-based violence court, uh, working with social workers in police stations that protect women. It's really strategic, but honestly, not losing hope in itself and protecting each other as well. I, I feel like as a youth space, we look out for each other. We try our best. It's not the perfect world. I cannot tell you that I give you the perfect answer. But all I can say is push, 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 but nowhere to pull. Exactly. I really, really, really love that. And, you know, uh, it's our responsibility as youth leaders to, to speak for, for the unknown, for the, for the unheard. But at the same time, it's also our responsibility to keep them safe. So I think that's also something we have to be mindful of. Yeah, Pilemo? Yeah, I think basically just your approach and strategy, like knowing the context, your approach and strategy should be very specific to who you're dealing with. Because sometimes as young people, we want to start a revolution and be very sporadic, but sometimes that doesn't get you where you're going to. Like for instance, with the NSARS protests, we were trying to like, you know, be very loud and it worked. We got the attention of the government, but we weren't able to get a seat at the table at the end of the day, you know, because we didn't have a specific strategy on how to get there. So I think in keeping yourself, a way to keep yourself safe is to have a specific strategy and know how to speak the language of the people you are speaking to without making it look like you're trying to enforce your own, what you want on them, you know. So just know the language of the people and find a way to speak to them in a way that is, that ensures that, that you get you get what you want without getting hurt. Exactly, I really, really, really like that. You know, and I think this entire podcast um, episode revolved around you know the representation, the safety, but also the well, what Grace mentioned, the push and the pull. No, I'm um, no one to push, but also no one to pull. But um, yeah, this of course has been hello future speaking. 
the podcast, where the Youth Advisory Committee of the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs comes together to talk about meaningful participation and, of course, topics who are well, which are important for society as a whole, but most importantly, for the young people. Thank you for listening. I will see you next time. Mm-hmm.